Okay, hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? Uh, this video is going to be kind of two-part. Uh, first of all, I finally hit 1200 subscribers, so I want to thank you all very much for that. That happened. Um, I just was on family vacation and we went to uh, Sun Valley, Idaho and uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Two very different states, but um, I've been to Sun Valley before and we've vacationed there before, but I've never been to Colorado and I wanted to kind of check the place out. It's potentially a place I may move in the future, so I wanted to actually go there and uh, check it out for myself. Anyways, so I uh, couldn't really do any motorcycle or Jeep or project related videos, so I decided to wait till I got back to um, actually say thank you and that I reached 1200 subscribers. So I'm out here in the garage working on the Jeep and let me show you what I'm doing because that's what this video is going to be today is a Jeep project. So let's go over here. So over here is my 94 Jeep YJ as you can tell by the rectangle square rectangle square rectangle headlights um, and what I'm doing is just cleaning up my throttle body very thoroughly um, and then I got to noticing something taking a close look at the throttle body and I don't know if you can see that there's a restriction in here you got your bore going through the center and then the, there's a bump basically at this side where it, the uh, air comes through the butter, butterfly valve and enters into the intake manifold it basically restricts down uh, right here so I got to thinking I bet there's somebody out there that bored this straight through and uh, improved the airflow on these because that seems to be a built-in restriction for some reason. So of course I went on YouTube and did a little research and uh, sure enough you can get pre-bored um, or larger size, larger bore uh, throttle bodies to get for your um, Jeep uh, 4.0. 4.0 liter uh, engines um, but I wanted to see if anybody had any DIY for boring this out and if it worked and uh, I did find somebody that threw one of these on a lathe and that milled this out um, I also found other videos of similar throttle bodies where somebody just took a Dremel and uh, bored that out um, for my backyard mechanic uh, knowledge this doesn't need to be a precise uh, milled bore just for airflow obviously you want um, a, a streamlined uh, under, under, uninterrupted airflow through here but if you did this by hand I think it would be perfectly fine um, when people port and polish uh, heads cylinder heads they do it by hand with a, a grinder, hand grinder, all the time, and it works excellently. So, here's my uh, mechanical opinion, is I'm going to take a Dremel. Um, I would actually prefer to use a pneumatic grinder. Uh, however, my, my air compressor is not up to the challenge right now. I actually need to go through that thing and upgrade it, um, do some repair on it and all that. But um, what I can do is use, where we go? Oh, I got it somewhere. Uh, a corded Dremel, a, a plug-in Dremel. I'm going to be using that and an adapted burr. Um, a burr is basically, I don't have anything here prepared, but it's a syndrical cutting tool and it, it basically grinds or cuts away metal. Um, I don't. I do have grinding stones that I can use on here, but this is soft aluminum, and it'll just clog up a grinding stone. That's just going to be more work than it's worth. So I'm going to do the initial grinding and cutting with a burr and a Dremel, and uh, I'll take you along for the ride, and we'll see how this project turns out. If I post this, that means it worked. If it did not work, I don't think I'm going to post. But I may. I may still. Alright, so anyways, that's what we're doing. Actually, what I was talking about. So, I have my corded Dremel. 
and my uh, I wish it was was uh, straight but all I have is a tapered uh, sometimes they call it a Christmas tree burr and it's a single cut um, I wish I had a double cut where you'd have another uh, pattern of grooves here it's it helps reject the uh, or um, basically get rid of the the soft metal it helps it fly out of the tool and not clog up so much uh, this is this burr is actually intended to go into a, uh, a pneumatic grinder or a, also known as a pea grinder um, I've turned down the shaft though just ground it down to fit into a dremel uh, so this will work a lot better I'm going to do the majority of the cutting or grinding with this setup right here and then like I said I got some I got some abrasive flapper wheels and uh, stones as well that I can use to finish it off. So let's do that. Oh, don't forget to wear your protection. Always. So you can probably see the pattern there. See how it's that wide and then you can see where it's still narrow right there. I'm basically just going to make that pattern wider and wider until I get it flat and flush with everything. I'm just going to go slow, not press too hard, try to keep it as flat and level as I can so that I'm not tapering it in any direction. And I'm just going to keep going like this. I'm not going to make you, make you watch the whole thing. So we'll check back in. I've got the majority of it knocked down and it came out pretty smooth. So the biggest thing you want to try to avoid. So where this hole is right here is where the butterfly goes across. So all the way around from that hole to that hole is where that butterfly flapper, this guy, seats in there so you don't want to make gouges and grind away that part because then the butterfly flapper won't make a good seal it won't idle well and I've touched it a little bit um, and that's trying to avoid making contact with the area altogether uh, so I'm gonna have to deal with that I've also left ever so slight uh, amount of metal there still um, and that's all connected to dealing with these gouges what I'm going to try to do next is take one of these it's a honing tool you put it in a drill and it's got stones so it's meant for steel but with enough lubrication I'm going to try to run it in there and just kind of balance everything out uh, and I'll show you that part <laughs> Whoops, I just shot WD-40 everywhere. Um, so some of you may be concerned about the way that I'm doing this with the, the Dremel and everything. Um, well, for one, one thing, uh, I wanted to use the tool that pretty much everyone has access to, uh, if not already has, and that's, that's a Dremel. Um, the corded one is, is probably the cheapest one and, in my opinion, the most powerful. Uh, and as far as grinding this out by hand, not having it precision and everything, I'm not worried about it. Um, any metal that I take off is going to de-restrict this more. And even if I go wider than the bore, if I flare this hole out on the bottom, that's actually a good thing because basically it turns this into a venturi and if you don't know what a venturi is it's basically uh, squishing the air and then accelerating it on the other side it actually speeds up air so if I flare this out and turn it into a venturi then it's potentially actually improving the air through airflow through here so let's try this again to 
be doing a much better job. This may not be... Oh, so I can adjust the tension on here by screwing this part up. And that's what I want it to do. That's going to make the stones press out more firmly. It's putting tension on this spring right there. Making this tougher. Let's try that. It seems kind of light. Ooh. And it's just screwing back in. Alright. Uh, let me work on this for a second. We'll come back. So. I've done it for a little bit and uh, wiped it all out and then checked it and uh, it's doing a very nice job of almost bringing this back to a factory looking bore and that's what these stones will do is it um, hones the surface and just gives it a nice even texture uh, and a flush surface so I've adjusted the tension a little bit more on here so that it's going to press those stones out a little bit firmer and I'm just going to keep going. I've also uh, gone to a higher gear. If you have a drill with gears on it, I've gone to a higher speed, uh, lower torque, and that seems to be doing pretty good. So here we go. So hopefully you can see um, that's where we are. Uh, I've got a little bit more honing to do, but uh, it's blending the surface the surfaces together pretty well um, where the original bore was and where I ground it out uh, so you can see that we got a pretty good straight shot all the way through now um, like I said I gotta do some more finishing work but um, I think that's that's what I'm gonna show you for now and then we'll we'll come back to uh, actually trying it out on the on the Jeep reinstalled and start up and drive around but yeah, definitely uh, de-restricted it. So I wasn't able to totally get out all the grinder marks. Um, I can just hope though that uh, they're not going to interfere with the seal of the butterfly valve. Um, but And they do look like they're below where it seats. So hopefully that's the case seems like I've opened up a, a casting hole like from when this was cast there was a little bit of a hole there I may have opened that up but that's below the, the butterfly valve so it shouldn't be an issue one other thing I wanted to show you though uh, these these are bearings in here roller bearings um, where the butterfly shaft goes through um, because those sh those aluminum shavings go everywhere um, make sure that you get those shavings out of those bearings. And I'm just going to use WD-40 and just flush them out. Just one more time before we put it on the Jeep, I wanted to show you this all cleaned up. Um, I actually ended up using the uh, air compressor to blow out the bearings. Uh, make sure I got all the shavings out of there. If you don't have an air compressor though, you can just keep at it with a rag and some sort of spray cleaner, carb cleaner, WD-40 or whatever. But um, that's it, pretty much all cleaned up. Ready to reassemble. And go back on the Jeep and test. It's almost round. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Alright, let's try it. Putting the butterfly back in. I've got these screws uh, just loose and I want to show you something. Uh, since we did end up boring the whole thing, um, we did take material away. So this is, you can hear that with the screws loose it's, and uh, this is all the way tight. That butterfly valve is not sealing. So uh, what I'm going to need to do, there's an adjustment screw right here, is I'm going to back that out just a little bitty Allen or a hex key uh, wrench. I'm going to back that out until that seals up. So something to be aware of if you try this yourself. 
I was going to tighten down those screws and then make my adjustment here but then I thought of something that the holes in this butterfly valve plate are big so they can move around on the screws so if it's adjusted over to one side and I tighten down the screws and then try to uh, adjust for the gap right here um, it could potentially be binding on one side and still have a gap on the other side so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this loose so it floats in there uh, leave this loose so it floats in there and then um, just so you know this is a 2.5 yeah 2.5 millimeter uh, hex key so I'm just gonna back this out oh boy and then check inside where it seats yeah we're getting close I don't want it to get too tight I don't think because I don't want it to bind and stick oh yeah yeah just kind of wiggling it every once in a while in case it wants to bind that's definitely closing up the gap around there it had to come out a lot I wonder if it was already leaking by that seems pretty good I would imagine that over the years that this aluminum disc can wear out and actually uh, create a gap over time and that's why you have this adjustment to compensate for the bore opening up and I was having some idling issues that's what um, started this whole process of cleaning out the idle air adjustment or the idle air uh, valve uh, all that area so um, that's probably pretty good right there like I said I don't want to go too far and make it yeah it's kind of starting to stick there so I'm going to go back to where I don't have a lot of play on this and it's not binding when I try to open it so I'm going to leave that centered and then tighten down those screws Cool. All right, it's going back on. Um, and by the way, I'm reusing my gaskets on here. If you don't like it, go suck an egg. Gaskets prevent uh, vacuum leaks. As long as they can keep doing that, they're not broken. As long as they can keep doing that, you can reuse them. Um, now this is not showing you what you should do this is just showing you what I'm doing so if you say hey this guy on the internet uh, said it's okay to reuse my gaskets and then your car goes blows up it's not my fault I'm using mine reusing mine in fact maybe I'll make a video I'll show you how to make your own that's what I did here is I made my own a while back and I'm reusing it as long as there's no vacuum leak and it's not broken you can reuse them Tighten it up in a star pattern. As you would. Reconnect the plugs. Cables. Yeah, 
because this one actually, I don't know if you can see that in camera, but this one goes to the cruise control, which I don't have. <coughs> Alright, let's reconnect this sucker. Oh, also, here's another thing. Actually, I'll be right back. Alright, I've taken that hose back off because I want to show you something else you can do um, that's super easy and it de restricts your airflow as well. Um, and that's if you have the stock air box. You see right here, there's a. this is actually a Venturi. This is what I was talking about earlier. This thing restricts a lot, and I've only seen one video of. of somebody uh, removing this on the internet and he did it really hard and it's it's super easy that's why I've thrown it back in here even though I've had this out I've thrown it back in here to show you how to do this last time I took the the whole air box out but I should be able to do it without there's holes on either side right here just look at your own take my word for it there's a little snap right in there you just stick a screwdriver in there pry that sucker out just keep going on both sides Now there's O-rings. There's an O-ring inside here and back here. Those are what's holding on. So if it's giving resistance and it wants to slide back in, that's what it is. So hold it with your one hand and pry inch by inch with the other, like millimeter by millimeter. Eventually, you'll get those O-rings to release. And essentially this thing remains reusable if you want to throw it back in. If you find that it causes problems. Um, the other guy I saw, uh, which I'm happy that he made a video because otherwise I wouldn't have known about this. Um, he used a pair of pliers and chewed this thing whole, all up. It was no longer usable. And right now I'm chewing this thing up more than I did the first time I took it out. That's because I'm doing it in place. There it is. So. You can see how small, how, uh, how restricted that goes down to. And you can see what it is now. So along with grinding out the throttle body, <laughs> take this thing out too, I would suggest.
Let's take it for a test drive. updated 